everyone. How's everybody doing today? Friday. Week, um... Who even knows of quarantine? Still here, still doing, uh... These talks. Can everyone hear me okay? Sound good? AC not too loud? Um... Sound off in the chat. Can we get some F's going for America? Just a, a big, big F for America. Uh, first wave turning into second wave. Good stuff. You love to see it. I'm just gonna keep blathering until somebody says something in the chat. So, um, all right, here we go. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Rob. As most of you know, uh, this is Radical History, um, and today I'm going to be talking about, uh, I cut off my hair. Uh, it was hot, and I didn't like it, and so I cut it off. Um, I figured that if I were going to live through the apocalypse, I might as well look the part. So uh, that's, um, that's where we're at. Um, so yeah, so... We're going to be talking about the Founding Fathers. Um, you may, uh, if you're at all online, have noticed, uh, or paying attention to the news at all, that um, some statues have been coming down. Um, they're, uh, they're, being, they're being pulled down. One might say, though, that they tripped. There really isn't any proof that they were pulled down. So, But anyway, they're now no longer upon the pedestals that they were on. And these statues are of uh, mostly Confederates, but also um, some statues have come down of our founding fathers, uh, George Washington uh, here in Portland, as well as a Thomas Jefferson here in Portland. I think those are the only ones I've heard of, uh, of the founding fathers, though. I might be wrong. Um, some conquistadors came down in uh, California and in New Mexico, uh, and this has prompted some conversation about... Um, whether or not we should have those statues, whether or not it's okay to, to tear them down. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about this, especially since there's been some some conversation specifically about the Founding Fathers. You know, uh, people will wring their hands and, uh, you know, make faces about Confederates coming down, but it's real hard to argue that there should be a statue of, uh, you know, Confederate general anywhere in the country. But uh, it gets stickier when it comes to the Founding Fathers. And so... I've had people say to me, Rob, you're a historian. Don't you feel like this is uh, this is making us uh, forget our history? Isn't this uh, some sort of a hideous, uh, anarchistic iconoclasm? Um, to which I say, no, not exactly. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to talk about why uh, that's not the case, uh, sort of at length. And, and to do so, I'm going to talk about... I'm going to rank the Founding Fathers, frankly. I'm going to... to best to worst, uh, just to talk about what was good and what was bad about them, and whether or not we should have any statues of them. Um, but before I get into the Founding Fathers themselves, I want to talk a little bit about um, what this type of history means. So, history is not set in stone. Uh, I know that this is shocking, but uh, as it turns out, you cannot just gather enough facts together, and that's history. History has to be interpreted. What you choose to place at the forefront of your historical inquiry matters. Uh, the way that it is framed is important. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we have to view the past through the lens of the present, but it means that we need to constantly be reinvestigating our sort of uh, prior biases and uh, the ways that we have come to approach uh, our historical inquiry. And so when I uh, criticize the Founding Fathers, for example, or or not even criticize, but try to draw attention to things that are maybe make some people uncomfortable, I'm not trying to erase history. I'm not being a revisionist. I'm just trying to help build a greater understanding of the past, which is what all historians are really trying to do, uh, unless they are, um, you know, uh, partisan hacks uh, like... Uh, for example, uh, Bill O'Reilly, uh, who uh, I am uh, distressed to say is the best-selling historical author in America today. Um, 
but for the most part, when we reapproach these questions, when we when we bring up, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, when we bring up, you know, some unpleasant things about about anybody uh, in the past, it's not to uh, discredit them or to uh, destroy their place in history. It's to help create a better understanding of what the past was like and who those people were. And, and frankly, it doesn't do us any good as people or as Americans to pretend that our founding fathers were infallible. That's that's a that's a child's approach to history, if I can be frank. There's there's no reason why we can't be honest about what was wrong with them and the places where they made mistakes and still uh, honor these sacrifices and that they made and the country that they built in certain ways. Um, I am actually not a huge founding father hater. I'm going to talk about the things that I did not like about them, uh, and some of them I like a lot less than others, but there are, there are genuinely admirable things about the uh, exclusively rich white men who fought to, you know, uh, free America from the British. Um, so bear that in mind. I also want to mention that statues aren't really about history. It's a dumb argument. Nobody thinks that, that you need a statue to remember something that happened in the past. A statue is about what you honor. A statue is a emblem of historical memory. It is about what we prize as a society, right? And the fact that certain people get statues and others don't indicates what we value as Americans. And so, if, for example, we value uh, all men being created equal, then having statues of slave owners is a contradiction, uh, and they should probably come down. And I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later. Uh, and I want to say one last thing before we get into the Founding Fathers, and there's this, there's an accusation sometimes that we are, well, this is presentism, right? That we are um, applying the ideals of the present to the past, which is a, a problem. You know, you, you can't fully understand your predecessors if you were trying to judge them by, um, you know, the standards of the day. Uh, you, you know, you, you should not go back to ancient Rome and expect them to have uh, social mores and behaviors that, that we have uh, in the modern day. That being said, um, I want to be clear that everybody in 1776 uh, knew that slavery was wrong. Um, and immoral, including slave owners. Uh, they didn't agree in the way that it was wrong, uh, and many uh, Southerners would defend it as sort of a, a necessity, but, but even the people who defended it, uh, for the most part, knew that there was something morally dubious about it. And, uh, you know, I, guess, I suppose there were, there were plenty of Southerners who would defend it on some sort of patriarchal, uh, you know, paternalistic ground, but among the Founding Fathers, they, to a man, knew that there was something unethical and morally unjustifiable about slavery. Uh, and there were men among them who did not own slaves. And I want to point out that the vast majority of people, because the vast majority of people were not wealthy landowners, didn't own slaves. So if somebody says to you, well, you can't criticize George Washington or Thomas Jefferson because they own slaves, that's what everybody did. That's not true. That's not true at all. Um, not everybody owned slaves. Even people who had the choice to own slaves didn't necessarily own slaves. Uh, and most people got on just fine without owning anybody. So bear that in mind as I start to talk to you about our founding fathers. Uh, so with all that in mind, I want to clarify by what I mean by the founding fathers. So uh, this is made up, but I'm just going to use this for uh, simplicity's sake. There are seven founding fathers based on the, uh, the members of the Committee of Five that drafted the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Adams, Jefferson, Franklin, um, and then Hamilton, Madison, and Jay for the Federal Federalist Papers. Um, so for a total of Alexander Hamilton, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and George Washington. Um, there were sometimes the founders refers to everybody who signed uh, the declaration, but we're going to stick with these seven. Um, it's uh, again, it's a totally like made up um, list, but uh, this is generally what people are talking about and. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to talk about seven people than 55 or whatever. Um, so, without further ado, the least bad... Oops, sorry. 
Let me make this full screen. Okay. The least bad founding father, or the best, is, and it uh, it pains me immeasurably to say this. Oh, I sorry. I want to say one more thing. Um, real quick. Um, sorry. One last disclaimer. Um, I'm not an expert on the, the founders, um, and there are a lot of people who are. Normally, I tend to stick to things that are a little bit more niche, uh, because they're more interesting to me, and because nobody can tell me I'm wrong. So, a lot of people know a lot about the founders. I know a little bit about some of them because of uh, related inquiries, uh, related historical study, but I'm not an expert. I also haven't seen... Um, yes, I switched it. Sorry, we are doing something different today. I'm going to be... My face is the center of attention from here on out, because I know that uh, I'm what you're here to see, folks. Um, no, it just, I just... I thought about this a lot, and I think it looks a little bit better this way. Um, so, um, I also haven't seen the play Hamilton. Uh, I don't know anything about it. I know what it's about. Uh, so, if you're expecting any references and uh, anything related to that, it's neither a, a judgment or a criticism. I'm just letting you know that I don't know a, a thing about it. Um, so, bear with me. And, uh, yeah. With that in mind, the least bad founding father is, in my opinion, Alexander Hampton. And again, it, uh, it gives me no pleasure to say this um, and, uh, and I want to be clear, this is just pure opinion. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, this is not a scientific ranking, but you'll, you'll understand how I came to this conclusion. But, uh, you know, Alexander Hamilton, least bad, no, I will not be rapping. Um, and, uh, the reason that, uh, Alexander Hamilton, uh, is the least bad is that he did not own slaves. Good job, Alexander Hamilton. Um, and he seems to have been pretty, uh ferociously uh, an abolitionist. He detested the institution of slavery, um, but like many of the politicians of the time, uh, he found it politically inconvenient to be an abolitionist. Uh, it was not great if you had any sort of political ambitions to be too, too vociferous about your uh, opposition to slavery, uh, no matter how much you detested it in person. So uh, it seems like Hamilton throughout his life um, definitely opposed slavery, and he wrote so in a lot of his public um, speeches and in his private correspondence, but uh, he resisted... Um, he had opportunities, as did most of these men, to do something about it and chose not to. So, that's fine. Alexander Hamilton gets a pass because he didn't own any slaves. Uh, he was also uh, consistently an abolitionist, um, and uh, that makes him better than a lot of the other founding fathers. However, I'm sorry to say that Alexander Hamilton is not without his faults. Um, uh, he argued passionately, at time and time again, for an elective monarchy, or at least a lifetime appointment for the president. He wanted there to be either a permanent executive or an American king. Uh, he was pretty clear about this. Um, he also... Uh, despite the fact that they made him an honorary citizen, opposed uh, the French Republic and uh, argued even for mobilization against it uh, when the uh, Grand Coalition uh, was coming together. Uh, I also have issues with his uh, stance on private property and banking and other things, but I, I have a lot of ground to cover, so I'm just going to stop there. Uh, again, as relatively not bad as he was, still... Uh, kind of a monarchist, and not good at dodging bullets, absolutely, and also just kind of a dick, like a lot of these guys are. So, Alexander Hamilton, um, least bad. Second least bad, second best founding father, John Adams. Um, John Adams also did not own slaves. Good job, John Adams. Um, and he was more than happy to tell you about it. He wrote at one point, I have through my whole life, held the practice of slave slavery in such abhorrence that I have never owned a Negro or any other slave, though I have lived for many years in times when the practice was not disgraceful, when the me best men in, men in my vicinity thought it not inconsistent with their character, and when it has cost me thousands of dollars to the labor and subsistence of free men, which I might have saved by the purchase of Negroes at times when they were very cheap. Um, so, you'll see that uh, he didn't do it, but he also didn't miss an opportunity to remind people that he could have, and he didn't, and uh, how much it cost him. Uh, and really, 
this is an important thing to remember. This doesn't really like matter and how we remember people, but John Adams was a real asshole. Nobody liked him. Uh, he was a huge pain in the ass. Yes. <laughs> Give me thanks for not owning slaves. Um, he uh, tried to get George Washington fired after one or more of his uh, defeats, and I, and I forget who it was. He tried to have somebody executed during the Revolutionary War for the uh, for losing a battle. Um, so really, the, the only good thing I can say about him is they didn't own slaves. Uh, he refused to publicly back abolition at every point, though um, he made noises in that direction. Um, he's responsible for passing the Alien and Sedition Acts, which were... Uh, you know, designed to out traitors and make it harder to immigrate and have been used uh, time and time again throughout American history to uh, lock people up and uh, accuse people of treason and all sorts of other shitty things. Um, he was probably also a monarchist uh, and at the very least wanted a much stronger executive. Um, he f even fought for the president to be addressed as Highness for a while. Um, so really not the best. In fact, John Adams was uh, of the Founding Fathers, one of the more conservative and was slow to the revolutionary cause. Um, so, again, owning people is very bad. Uh, and if you don't own people and everyone else does, that makes you better than them. But that's about the only thing that John Adams did, in my opinion, that, uh, you know, is particularly laudable. Uh, he had, again, all of these all of our founding fathers had some, you know, pretty stirring speeches and good ideas and relatively innovative uh, governmental, you know, innovations. But uh, nothing that uh, that we couldn't have gotten somewhere else. Um, also, it's it's worth um, worth mentioning that uh, John Ad that uh, Abigail Adams was a loud and um, enthusiastic proponent of women's suffrage, and John Adams repeatedly ignored her, uh, despite <laughs> being married to her. Uh, he had every opportunity to push for women's suffrage and uh, uh, decided not to. Fun fact, uh, New Jersey actually had women's full uh, women's suffrage for about 30 years, starting in 1980, or sorry, 18, 1787, Jesus. Um, but it was traded away in sort of like a political gambit to help New Jersey win in the 1808 elections. Anyway, so uh, that sucks. Disappointing, right? All right. That ends our um, non-slave-owning founding fathers. Uh, next to least bad is, in my opinion, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin owned as many as seven slaves? It's, uh, it's a little unclear, uh, but the, at least two who worked in his household and his shop uh, and who came with him to England. Um, he also posted paid ads for the sale of slaves and the capture of runaway slaves and allowed the slave the sale of slaves in his general store. Uh, not great, Ben. Do better. Um, that being said, Benjamin Franklin became a staunch abolitionist later in life and freed his slaves. Still, no real cookie for Benjamin Franklin on this, but uh, better than some of uh, his peers. I tend to like Benjamin Franklin, generally. He's a funny, smart, uh, horny founding father. He, he published a paper. Uh, he was a libertine and a jokester. Uh, you know, invented some stuff. Uh, generally, you know, a pretty okay guy, though I gotta say, his Poor Richard's Almanac and a lot of his writings uh, are just full of absolutely insane Protestant work ethic stuff, which I gotta point out, he didn't really live himself. He was very much a, a dilettante and kind of you know, lazy after he'd uh, made his fortune, uh, he spent most of his life essentially retired. Uh, so all that early to bed, early to rise shit is, uh, you know, just brain poison. Um, so uh, Ben Franklin, he's okay. Uh, not great. Owning people is bad. But uh, he did free his slaves, and he only owned a few. So uh, pretty good for you, Ben Franklin. Um Next least bad founding father, John Jay. Wait, you might be saying, who the fuck is John Jay? Good question. Um, John Jay is one of the founding fathers uh, and uh, was a, a writer of the Federalist Papers, Secretary of State, uh, Supreme Court Justice. Uh, not, Don't worry too much about it. Um, anyway, um, John Jay owned five slaves and was a vocal abolitionist after the Revolution. Uh, when he was governor of New York, he signed gradual 
uh, manumission. Uh, you know, uh, eventually all slaves in New York would be free, um, but uh, not right away. So, not great, John, but uh, again, better than the alternative. Uh, he wrote in one of his, his many writings, um, every man of color and description has a, a natural right to freedom. Uh, and he seemed at the end of his life to believe it. Um, but, um, you know, his commitment to this particular task is, in my opinion, uh, not, not as, not as, not as uh, fierce as I would like. I, I expect better from somebody who says something like that. So, John Jay, middle of the road when it comes to Founding Fathers. All right, we're getting to the bottom of the barrel, folks. And you'll notice that I, uh, there's uh, some big names coming up. So, uh, next least bad, George Washington. Um, and, uh, oh, George, uh, I wish that I could say something different about, uh, about old George, but I can't. Um, unfortunately, um, at the time of his death, George Washington owned 123 slaves, personally, just himself and 317 were employed at his Mount Vernon estate. The rest were um, part of his uh, um, marriage with his wife from her estate. Uh, it was not, despite what you may have read, a uh, idyllic agrarian lifestyle. Many of the slaves on the Mount Vernon plantation, uh, slave camp, uh, tried to escape, and the Washingtons were not shy about uh, sending people to bring them back. Um, I know you also probably know a little bit about George Washington's false teeth. Uh, it is probable that they were not made out of wood. They were made out of the teeth of slaves. So, uh, not great. Uh, so owning hundreds of people, pretty bad. Um, extremely bad, in my opinion. Um, sort of unforgivable, but Washington doesn't make the, the worst of this list for a couple of reasons. Um, he seems to have been genuinely committed to abolition uh, or the idea of abolition at the end of his life. Um, and he wrote, I can only say that there is not a man living who wishes more sincerely than I do to see a plan accomplished for the abolition of slavery. But there is only one proper and effectual mode by which it can be accomplished, and that is by legislative authority. And thus, as far as my suffrage will go, shall never be wanting. Washington believed, uh, like many of his peers, that, uh, that um, you know, abolition was correct, but, again, missed the opportunity to actually do something about it. Now, this is where George Washington um, exceeds most of his peers, because at the end of his life, he freed all of his slaves. Again, not really good enough, and no cookie, but uh, given that... Uh, many of his fellow founding fathers had the opportunity to do so and chose not to. George Washington gets a little bit of credit for actually following through on his promise. Uh, so good for him. I also want to mention, and when it comes to revering the founding fathers, George Washington was at best a middling general and had a uh, a pretty average military career when it come, came to, to victories and successes. Um, the Prussian general von Steuben had to come and uh, show him how to keep accurate records and to tell his men to um, uh, line their tents up in a row uh, and dig latrines, uh, you know, further away from them. Um, so, it uh, he was, as far as I can tell, um, people followed him because they believed in him. He was inspirational. He was a good leader. I'm not sure he was a great general. Um, the teeth, I, I mentioned this already, but I, I do want to come back to it. Again, they were probably made out of slave teeth. Uh, this is one of those things you can't be 100% sure about. He was very tall. Uh, and uh, on another lecture, I will talk maybe, this isn't really a history lecture, but we can talk about uh, what being tall does for you when it comes to politics. But uh, yeah, George, George Washington was uh, a pretty tall man. Uh, people seem to like him. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> um, there are other things that I like about Washington. And again, he's actually one of my favorite founding fathers, and I wish I could rank, rank him higher, uh, but I can't because owning slaves is quite evil. But he um, he 
was a member of uh, the Cincinnati Society um, and um, believed very much in the ideals of the Republic, as we might have thought of them. Uh, Cincinnati was a Roman general who was called from his farm to essentially serve as military leader during a crisis as a dictator. And when it was over, uh, he resigned his commission and went back to his farm. Um, it it uh, is seen as sort of like a you know the the honorable military action, right? Uh, you know there was plenty of opportunity for Washington to set himself up as a dictator uh, or some sort of you know um, military junta, and he resisted the opportunity at every or urged every opportunity. Uh, he um, made sure that his officers, when they were pushing for, even when they were threatening to come after Congress for back pay to to make sure that they were. Uh, under control. So this this I respect um, about George Washington. Um, I, I think I think that he, despite the fact that he um, did not, the fact that he did own slaves and that did not free them until his death, uh, he believed in uh, Republican ideals with a, a sort of um, a, a genuine um, commitment to them that that I like. Still, I'm sorry. Um, what? Well, I'm gonna. That's a good question, Radical Mar, uh, and I'm I'm gonna talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, but I, I want to. So, like I said, there were plenty of. All of these men knew knew abolition was correct and that owning slaves was wrong. Um, the Quakers, notably, had been vocal abolitionists since uh, the late 17 or 1600s. Um, and, um, it was really a lot of the, um, the radical religious communities, uh, that had made the pretty compelling argument that, uh, any reading of the Bible suggests that uh, owning slaves is wrong. Um, and so these ideas were not, um, they were not in the mainstream, right, uh, in terms of who had political power, but there are plenty of people who believed them, and they were out in the open. Um, and, and I'll talk about two people specifically who uh, genuinely believe them and who these founding fathers would hit, were friends with, who were uh, committed and actual abolitionists. Uh, but first, our last two founding fathers. All right, second worst founding father. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, I'm sorry, everybody. I missed a slide. Um, you'll just have to imagine what James Madison looks like. I apologize. Um, James Madison. Um, second worst. Uh, James Madison was born on a 4,000 acre uh, plantation, slave labor camp, with over 100 slaves, which he then uh, inherited when his father died and brought a lot of them to the White House. Um, I, it is important to remember that Washington, D.C., the city, was built on slave labor. Uh, it is uncontroversial that this, this happened. Um, Madison believed that slavery was dishonorable to the national character and believed it wrong to admit in the Constitution that the idea, the idea that there could be property in men, but was still largely responsible for the Three-Fifths Compromise. Mm, not good, Madison, do better. Um, he did free one slave, uh, the slave that he brought with him to the Constitutional Convention, because apparently he was having some trouble with the contradictions of uh, advocating for all men being created equal, but uh, having a slave with him. Uh, but he did not free all of his slaves uh, as George Washington did. Um, he was an advocate for what was called at the time, what was just called colonization. Uh, but that just meant uh, it was popular among a lot of founding fathers, a lot of white people, uh, sending slaves back to Africa. Um, not freeing them, allowing them to live among whites, but freeing them and sending them back. Uh, this was about as far as Madison was willing to go, and a lot of founding fathers, and including, I have to mention, at certain times, uh, Abraham Lincoln himself uh, thought that this was the only solution to the slavery po problem. Uh, Madison also believed, I have not mentioned, by the way, and I'm very sorry about this, um, all of these, the Founding Fathers' attitudes towards indigenous people, uh, which are almost exclusively reprehensible. 
um, because I just frankly don't have time. Uh, and that's, I, I have, uh, and uh, I feel bad because it's important. I don't want to give the impression that it's not, but you can assume that unless I say otherwise, that every founding father believed that the indigenous people of America were at best a nuisance. Um, James Madison specifically called the Shawnees a perfidious people and considered all Indians to be savages. So, um, above and beyond the rest. rest. <clears throat> so now we come to our final founding father, the worst of all of them. You guessed it, folks. Uh, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, Thomas Jefferson owned 600 slaves over his lifetime and talked a lot about abolition, but did nothing about it. He did not free his slaves at death and believed quite uh, clearly in the intellectual and moral inferiority of black people. He wrote so uh, time and time again. Uh, he also, and I'm realizing this is controversial, so I'm going to hedge it, but he probably fathered up to six children with Sally Hemings, um, who was a young black slave, I think 15 or 20 years his junior. Um, to be clear, this is rape. A slave cannot meaningly, meaningfully consent to a relationship. Uh, it's also worth noting that probably every man, every one of these men who own slaves uh, engage in this practice. We just don't know for sure. Um, it's, just, it's just the way that it is. Um, and, and what's frustrating about Jefferson Oh, yes. Sorry. I, I, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, their children, those children were then slaves themselves. Um, that's bad, folks. It's just bad. The Sally Hemings thing, it's just, it's, it's bad above and beyond owning hundreds of people. Um, and what's frustrating is that Jefferson knew exactly what he was doing was wrong. Uh, maybe more than any of the other founding fathers of them. And this is disappointing because I would like to rank him higher. He had some pretty radical ideas and uh, was concerned about liberty and equality and uh, tyranny in a way that uh, some of our uh, pro-monarchy founding fathers were not. But uh, he was a hypocrite of the worst order. Uh, he wrote that uh, you know the institution of slavery was forcing tyranny and depravity on master and slave alike. To be a slaveholder meant one had to believe that the worst white man was better than the best black man. Uh, if you did not believe these things, you could not justify yourself to yourself. And yet, and yet, Jefferson uh, did not, when he had the opportunity to do so, free his slaves. Um, one good thing, in contrast, he did seem to believe that uh, American Indians should be treated more like equals and supported uh, assimilationist policies, again, which are awful, but a um, significant improvement over re removal and extermination, which were basically what everyone else was advocating. Uh, though there's some question on whether or not this was actually his commitment uh, or whether it was just a pretext to seize Indian lands. So there we go. Our, our founding fathers ranked. So you may be asking yourself, uh, Rob, who then uh, should we have statues of? Uh, who should we put on our money? Um, to which I'm sure you know that I'm going to say no one. But I understand the question, right? So um, uh, is it that there's there's no one of virtue, no one we can look to um, as genuinely embodying American ideals? Is, is there anybody who is a, a true patriot in the way that we might understand that? Uh, is there really anybody who who believed in the uh, the project of the Constitution uh, and our great city on the hill the way that they claimed to, but did not do in action? Again, I, I feel like it would be better to, I mean, no statues, I, I think, you know, or, or, or maybe just refresh them periodically, uh, create a public works program to, you know, every now and then put up statues of people we like. Um, yeah, Mr. Rogers. Um, I don't I mean, you know who I'd like to see? Uh, you know, give us some Nat Turners and John Browns and, you know, uh, a thousand to the, you know, 54th Massachusetts or... Um, but anyway, 
the point is, we could just have no statues, put uh, an abstraction, put an eagle on every dollar bill. I don't care. You know, um, put the Grand Canyon on there. I just, you know, there's a lot of great things about America that are not old dead white dudes. But if, here's the thing. If, I, if you know, I've you put a gun to my head, I, I would like to put no white people on anything. But I, I, I challenge myself, if we were going to revere any, um, any like old white dudes in the revolution, who should we look up to? So there are a few who I thought are, are people worth emulating. And this is, again, just personally me. This is what I believe. Uh, every person is flawed. And the sooner that you sort of disabuse your notion of, there's, of the idea that there's anyone who is totally blameless, um, who can be, you know, uh, a, 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 a hero without flaw is, you know, the, the sooner you can do that, the, the, the better off you'll be. But there are some people who are worthy, who we can look up to as, um, you know, examples of, uh, you know, political rectitude and, and living well, right? Uh, believe, living their beliefs. And so, if there have to be statues of anybody from the revolution, um, may I propose first the Marquis de Lafayette. So, uh, like all of these other men, Lafayette was born wealthy, uh, and his family owned slaves, but he, uh, went to school and very quickly began to learn the ideals of the enlightenment and saw the error of slavery, um, and immediately, uh, pushed hard for abolition, uh, even after the revolution, purchasing a number of plantations with the intent to free the slaves. He, he bought them uh, for no other reason than to free the slaves that worked there. Um, he wrote uh, a couple of times, uh, in the cause of my black brethren, I feel myself warmly interested and most decidedly uh, siding against the white part of mankind. Whatever be the complexion of the enslaved, it does not, in my opinion, alter the complexion of the crime which the enslaver commits a crime much blacker than any African face. Uh, he also, and this is maybe apocryphal, but somebody else reported that he said, I would never have drawn my sword in the cause of America if I could have conceived that thereby, thereby I was founding a land of slavery. Now, Lafayette, later in life, um, yeah, he betrayed the revolution in 1828, uh, but uh, he was pretty old by then, and uh, the Bourbons, blah, blah, blah. If you were uh, there for my... Um, for my 1848 lecture, you heard a little bit about that. So Lafayette's not perfect. He was a bit of a goof, um, and uh, you know he definitely sided with the wrong people time and time again. But he believed in abolition and fought for it. He put his money where his mouth was. Right? Uh, any of the founding fathers um, could have, with their immense wealth, again, just really wealthy people, could have freed their slaves bought a bunch of other slaves and freed them, which is what the Marquis de Lafayette did. So to me, this is sort of like the bare minimum to be uh, sort of absolved of the sin of slavery if you are a rich white man in, the, in the, the revolution. If you can't do at least what Lafayette did, then you're dead to me. No, no statue. No statue. Um, so uh, statues of Lafayette can stay up. Uh, and um, I have said time and time again that I don't really care about statues, and I don't know where there are any statues of Lafayette, but if I saw people taking down a statue of Lafayette, I would say, hey, folks, hang on. This guy's okay. Um, there's only been a little bit of statue-friendly fire so far. I haven't seen anybody take anything down that really needed to come down, but uh, Lafayette can stay up. So, Lafayette. And then there are a few others, but I just wanted to do two to be quick. Um... Yeah, Lafayette Park is in the front of the White House. Is there a statue there? I actually, I have not been to that park. Okay, the park's named after him. Anyway, that's a good name for the park. You should stay. If there's a statue, uh, that's great. Don't pull it down. Um, the other person, I think, who is worthy of consideration as a, as a founding father uh, is Thomas Paine. Um, again, not perfect. Um, you know, a, pro a person with, with plenty of problems. Again, a man of the uh, 18th century, but... He, his whole life, argued uh, fiercely for the abolition of slavery. Uh, he respected the rights and independence of the indigenous, indigenous people of America, and he drew inspiration from and deeply respected the Iroquois especially. Um, he wrote most of our best tracts about freedom and liberty. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the garbage that they make you read in school um, is garbage. Uh, frankly, 
I feel... Oh, Balto can stay. Great point. Balto can stay. Um, you know, I... Uh, blasphemy, maybe, but I can't believe they make kids read the Federalist, Federalist Papers. Like, I, I, I can think of, like, a thousand things that every, like, government and civic student should read before they read the Federalist Papers to really understand democracy. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, statues of dogs. Just dogs, horses. Take all the guys off of the horses and just leave the horse. That's a, that's a, that's a compromise I can deal with. Um, Payne also... Uh, argued uh, in his later in his life for a uh, state pension for all workers starting at age 50, arguing that protection of property was in a way disenfranchising the working person. Um, uh, he wrote, in advocating for the case of persons thus dispossessed, it is a right and not a charity. Government must create a national fund out of which there shall be paid to every person when arrived at the age of 21 years the sum of 15 pounds sterling as a compensation in part for the loss of his or her natural inheritance by the introduction of the system of landed property. Uh, Payne, more so than any of his peers, believed that, uh, understood the relationship between economic liberty and political liberty. So, again, we don't have to have any political heroes in this time period. There were a lot of people in the American Revolution who bled and died and went to their graves believing that they were fighting for freedom, liberty, and equality. And a lot of them, we don't know their names. A lot of them were ordinary people. A lot of them were, um, you know, regular folks, uh, colonists who, who believed what, you know, what they were told by their landed gentry leaders. Um, and we can look to the revolution as a moment of liberty and equality and freedom without valorizing or lionizing these, you know, small handful of landed gentry who frankly captured a lot of that revolutionary spirit and failed to, uh, to act upon it. The truth is, and, and it's no secret why they did this. We know why they did it. Um, and just because we can understand they were trying to keep the country together, they were trying to avoid an immediate, you know, conflict with the South, doesn't make it right. Um, they knew with absolute certainty that they were kicking the can down the road on slavery. They knew um, without a shadow of a doubt that it was going to be a problem, and they decided not to deal with it. They chose, uh, even though that they knew it was wrong, to uh, ignore the problem and leave it for future generations to, to deal with. And we already fought one civil war over it and frankly didn't solve the problem and this remains uh, America's original sin. It is our it is our ongoing um, catastrophe. It is, uh, it is, you know, um, the gravest mistake that this country has made and it remains um, a stain uh, on the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and everything that we would hope to build uh, so long as we have failed to address this problem. Uh, and to me, that begins with being very, very candid and very, very straightforward about the relationship that our founding fathers had to slaves and their ownership of them and their failure to act on the matter of abolition when it was timely. Um, so thank you everybody for coming and listening to my rant uh, about uh, the Founding Fathers. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and educational. Um, with this especially, I would absolutely encourage you to do some reading on your own. I do hope that uh, I have given you some ammunition uh, if you should run into anybody who has a problem with uh, statues of Washington or Jefferson coming down. Um, I think that it is pretty inarguable and uncontrovertible, un incontrovertible that it is bad to own slaves. And I think I, I hope that I have demonstrated that the founding fathers who owned slaves knew that. They were not in any way under the impression that what they were doing was uh, morally justified. So uh, good luck in ongoing conversations with people about this. Um, Stay safe, stay healthy, no pasaran, and uh, I will be back next week with another 
lecture. Uh, see you all then.